What's going on, people? Welcome back to another John Sinclair TV back again. And um, I've got with me James from Michigan. Am I right? Or... Yes. <laughs> That's good. So Michigan, so um, it's lovely out there on the water. Fat. So hi to James. How are you? Doing well. Happy to be here. Good stuff, good stuff. And guys, you like the video, like what you watch, make sure you hit that like button. Also subscribe to the channel as well. I've got a big announcement coming up very, very soon. I know it's been seen on Twitter as a deer, but I'm going to make an announcement very soon. And if you'd like to become a member, it's just 99p. So just think about being a member. And you could win a £50 e voucher next month during the Champions League. So, James, tell the viewers how I've been a Newcastle fan for. And what has been your great moments? So I've been a fan for 25 years. Um, so I had the pleasure of studying in Newcastle at Newcastle University in the late 90s. Um, so the first FA Cup year um, was my first full year being a, a Newcastle fan. And so yeah. the double decker bus with, you know, after the loss with all the fans out there, um, I was there. And I've been a Newcastle fan diehard ever since, because if you roll that hard for your team after a loss, um, you know, it's it's wonderful. Um, so I got to see Shearer in person, which was really cool. Um, and, you know, during the Ashley years, it was tough, especially mm. here in the States, um, because we didn't have um, access to a lot of the matches, especially when they were in the championship. So we would, you know, you're trying to find any little bootleg link you can find to watch Newcastle. Um, and there aren't a lot, there weren't lots of Newcastle fans that you knew of um, around the country. So you kind of felt like you were by yourself watching these matches. But I've been a fan um, ever since. Fantastic, fantastic. You just said Mike Ashley's uh, been tough under Mike Ashley. It's been very tough. 14 years under Ashley, two allegations handful of relegation dog fights and it is so sad we just don't want to ever happen again but that's for another dear we move forward and actually we're going to talk about it now and we're going to talk about um the young guns and newcastle united who's going to make a big difference i mean we've seen the fun list and we've got players like elliot anderson anthony gordon lewis manley you've got jay turner cook as well first of all i want to talk about Elliot Anderson. Now, this guy has been absolutely fantastic. He had a fantastic preseason. What is Elliot Anderson's ceiling? Now, how far can he go in other words? So I think he's going to be our future star and probably will be the mentor and kind of captain for the squad with the younger players that we have coming up. Um, he's He's homegrown. He understands what it takes to really be a, a talent and a long time talent in Newcastle. And he's willing to put in the work um, just to see how much he's evolved in the last year is pretty incredible. And I also think for him, once he gets to the point of having all of his, all the pieces around him, um, he's gonna even get even better. 100%. And what I love about Elliot Anderson, he's got energy, he's young, He's 20 years old, 21 years old, talented, and he's destined to go for the very top. I mean, going out on Lorna Bristol, Bristol Rovers, by the way, has toughened him up a wee bit. And he's been mm -hmm. one of their key players, their best player. And he helped Bristol Rovers to get third and got them out of the league two. And that's the only time they've been third and got them out of the league two. But this guy under Eddie Howe's stewardship, He's going to be fantastic. I think this kid's going to be playing for England because he's so hungry. And that is what we need. It's been a while since he got a Geordie talent come through. Yeah. And I, I think he also was comfortable with the bright lights. You know, Jordi Maradona and all the stuff he had to do yeah. <laughs> while he was on loan. And it didn't make it where, it, where he slacked. Um, if anything, he worked harder and got even more goals. So he's used to the bright lights. I think he'll be comfortable... Um, and I think the club is in a good space for him where he can continue to grow. He doesn't have to be the lead guy now, but by the time he's ready to be the lead, um, he'll be ready. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, I think he's going to be in the first team as well. And he's going to be playing the first team. I would not be surprised if he was picked for the game against Aston Villa. We've got the midfield now is so packed with likes of Joel Linton, <laughs> Bruno G, 
Joe Linton, Sean Longstaff, Jake Murphy, yeah, Anthony Gordon, Harvey Barnes are going to come on to later. And I tell you what, mate, it's going to be, it's just Eddie Howe's going to get paid for this. He's got to get paid to make decisions. And I'm sure whoever you picks, we will back the team. Absolutely. Um, so one of the things about the Philly match that I went to um, was the different um, kind of setup that he did um, in the beginning of the match, which confused everybody. But as I've thought about it some more, I get it. Um, part of it is with all those players in the midfield, he has to have the ability to be able to switch and move people around and have different ways to attack, um, especially with the amount of matches we have coming up. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. And the fact that we have all these young young guys, too, um, that are also midfielders, I, I think we're in good shape for the future. Yeah. I mean, look, at the end of the day, I mean, we've got the players at the right time. I mean, this will never happen under Steve Bruce. This will never, ever happen because... <laughs> Or they, they would, uh, he would probably sell Elliot Anderson on to Bristol Rovers for a couple of million, for about a million quid, whatever sort of thing, you know. And do you know what I mean? That was never going to happen anytime soon. But what about Lewis Miley? I mean, this guy, I, used to, I never heard of the guy, played twice against Chelsea, right? And both times, it's been very impressive. I love Lewis Miley. 17 years old. He's a local lad from Stanley, I believe, County Durham. And Again, a ceiling's very, very high. I've heard that Leicester City wants him on lawn, but Eddie Howe is not going to get rid of him. Even not no. Sir Lewis Manley or even loan him out. He needs to be here for the first team because we need all the players like the Marleys. We need Andersons. We need T um, Turner Cook and Parkinson as well. They've got to be playing in cup games as well. But Lewis Manley, the sky's the limit for this guy. Yeah. Lewis Manley plays like a grown up. You forget how old he is when he's out there with the first team. Mm -hmm. And he honestly just looks like he belongs and he rises to the moment. He's still young, so he'll make an occasional mistake, but mm -hmm. he works really hard to fix the mistakes. And he also has, he's getting the ability to be in the right place at the right time. And that's not something you can really teach. He just has it. Um, so there were points in the matches that he has played where I'm like, wow, like, I, I forget how old he is. And I, I think that bodes really well. Yeah, I hope there are going to be lots of people that are going to try and get him either on loan or going to try and um, buy him. Honestly, I think we keep him. I think we let him work with the first team, especially with mm -hmm. the amount of matches we're going to have this year, um, see where he comes out, and then next year make a decision if he needs to go out on loan or whether he just stays with the first team. But I think he's, he's definitely – got poise. Um, I love the fact that they made him captain for one of the preseason matches. Just just great. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. great. Absolutely. And you know, I mean, what I like about him, he's so calm. He's got a cool head. He is so calm. You know, he doesn't fear us. And I tell you what, he got in the way Nicholas Jackson as well from Chelsea. And by the way, that guy's going to be whoo, hot. Oh, wow. <laughs> what a player. We couldn't look after him the first half. He all that stage, man. We couldn't. I tell you what, I mean, we need to fix up on then. We do play Chelsea because I tell you what, Everson and Cuckoo, this guy, he is the real deal. And I think you missed a trick on this guy. We should have got him. You know Absolutely. what I mean? But we missed a trick on him. But that's he doesn't play for Newcastle. But I tell you what, this guy's going to be brilliant. That's another time. He's a talent. He's a talent, isn't he, that guy. He is brilliant. He really is. But so going on to, we're back to um, Lewis. It's brought about Jamie as well. He looks as good as well. And but I think I, if any of the two is going to go out on Lord, it'll probably be Jamie. Jamie. But, yeah, but Lewis is going to be the one. I think Edge is going to have fear from. It could be our Phil Forden. But then yeah. again, Philford could be found in a different position as well. But I never heard of the guy until well now. And he's I think on Eddie's um leadership, I think it's gonna be really good. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think the biggest change between the old regime and the new regime is look at what happened with the Longstaff brothers and look at where the Miley's are and what we're looking at as far as where they're ultimately going to go. Um, they have a structure, they're being looked after, they're being, you know, developed at a, at a good pace. I 
think that the benefit for both of them is going to be um, pretty solid. Um, where you know, with Steve Bruce and the Longstaffs, it was just it was just horrible what happened. And I think that this is definitely a new day, and they appreciate youth. Um, you know, Dan Ashford, Dan Ashworth's um, focus has always been you know, at every place he's been around um, building up young folks and the people we've brought into the academy and the young people that we've had playing with the first team have all been solid. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think this is just the, the start of us being able to really develop homegrown talent and academy talent um, for the long term. Yeah. Totally agree, totally agree. I mean, I believe in youth anyway. If you're old enough, you're good enough in my book. And long may I continue. I want to talk about as well. I mean, a lot of people haven't heard of him, that like Jay Turner Cook. I mean, every time I watch him play, I, I think he looks really impressive for a big lad. I mean, look, came on against Gid said, yeah, okay, it's Gid said, but scored a good goal. And he looks hungry. He came from Sunderland as well. And I'll tell you what, mm -hmm. I mean, he'd be playing in the cup games as well. I'd definitely keep him. Oh yeah, I, I think we keep. I think we keep as many people as we can. Um, one because of the amount of matches, and two, he's shown quality. Um, so if you give him opportunities to grow, and also being with the first team um, on occasion will help him kind of develop. And also, you'll be able to see where he where his challenges are and what he needs to work on. Um, and it's not that easy to find when it's just practices or at the academy or you know under twenty one stuff like that. You know. Putting folks in the fire every once in a while helps, especially when you have somebody like Eddie Howe who's going to be supportive and work with them um, as they move forward. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, it'll just get better and better as well. We haven't talked about as much um, Anthony Gordon. I mean, I like Anthony Gordon. He's come at leaps and bounds as well. I mean, when he first came, a lot of people didn't want him at our football club. And I have to back Eddie Howe, 45 million quid. I think Everton fans must be laughing and say, get rid, take the money, get rid. And here we are. This guy is going to take us to another level. I've got Effie Fifth. I think he's going to be key for us this season. I mean, he needs to be playing. He can play multiple positions. He's fast. He's strong. Um, in the under-21s, he showed his poise and the ability for him to be able to step up and be a leader. Uh, I think all of that bodes well for him. And and last year, you know, part of it was leaving Everton when he did with all the crazy that was going on at Everton. Um, it was no wonder he came to us not in shape. I mean, I'm not surprised at all. Um, so the idea that he has, he's had a full, you know, preseason, he's had the under 21s to kind of get ready. I think the sky's the limit for him. And also, I think with the way, with the amount of matches we have and the way um, we're looking, that we're setting up, he's going to get a lot of opportunity to really shine um, in different roles for the team this year. Um, but yeah, I, I actually, initially when I saw the $45 million, my my issue wasn't with him as a player. It was more of the Newcastle tax. You know, I was like, okay, this yeah. is the time of us having to pay more because it's Newcastle. But once we got him in and I saw how hungry he was, I was like, we're going to be OK. Um, and, you know, and I think mentally for him, getting out of Everton and all the drama that he had to deal with, um, especially being homegrown, is, I think, helpful for him. And it's going to allow him to be an even better player because mentally he's in a better place. 100%. As long as he doesn't fight Kieran Trippier. I don't know if you saw him when he, when he played for Everton. He, he died for the try to win a penalty. I was in Turkey that day and he died for trying to win a penalty. Then he went um, face to face to Trippier. I thought he was going to headbutt him for the minutes. I really thought he was going to do that. But he thought, then he thought of it. You know what I mean? And then when he wanted to come to Newcastle, I thought, I want to come to Newcastle so I don't want to take on Kieran Trippier. I'm going to listen to him, blah, blah, blah. And they're best of mates. Yeah, but, you know, I, I knew it was going to be okay because Eddie Howe kind of thinks all that stuff through. So he had Jason Tindall walking him around. So I knew <laughs> once I saw who was walking him around, I said, oh, yeah, it's going to be fine. They're going to joke about it. They'll, mm. they'll figure it out. They'll find, you know, the intensity is there. He was he was representing his team, and now he's representing ours. And, uh, you know, intensity is everything. Yeah, 
absolutely. We're going to talk about the two signings in mid, Sancho Tonali and Harvey Barnes. I mean, we spent, what, 90 million on between the two players as well, 52 on Tonali, 38 on Harvey Barnes. I think me, I think the great signings, Harvey Barnes will definitely be, um, go to a place ASM. Obviously, ASM has moved on to Ali in Saudi. And we're going to come on to ASM a bit later on. But Harvey Barnes, he'll come in and I think he'll do a good job at Newcastle. Yeah, for, for Barnes to be able to score as much as he did on a team that wasn't very good, <laughs> and yeah. for him to be able to come here now with the people he'll be around and also to be able to be set up for goals, I think we're in good shape. Our biggest issue last year was that we would do all this work and then get to the final third and not be able to finish. Barnes is a finisher. And yes. that alone makes me happy that he's here. Um, I love Maxi, and we'll talk about that later, but I love Maxi. But okay. Maxi was not a finisher at this point in his career. I think he will be. But Barnes is basically, if you get him the ball in that area, he's going to find a way to get it in the goal. And, and that's what we need, especially with the matches that we're going to have, the fact that we're not going to get the opportunities we used to have because people are going to play more um, defensive football with us now. Um, so any opportunity we get to the goal, we have to take advantage. 100%. And you know what it is with Harvey Barnes? I mean, it's a stat for you, right? I mean, Harvey Barnes scored 13 goals last season for Leicester. ASM scored 11 goals in four seasons, 22 assists. Mm -hmm. That is not a good record, I'm afraid. I love ASM, I love him, but I just think Harvey Barnes has got that X factor, and that is the thing. We need consistency. We need goals in the back of the net. ASM, we are going to talk about ASM. He's um, He's got it. He's got all the tricks and the dribbles in the world. The problem is, he hasn't got an product. That is this problem. And I mm -hmm. feel sorry for him. I love him, but I feel for him because he's a fit team, and I think if anyone see it, he was a fit team of FFP. That's oh, all it is. That's yeah. all he is. Yeah, we would have kept him if we if we had the ability to, because um, I think him and Barnes together would be scary. <laughs> you can yeah. swap them out and move them around. That would be very scary. Um, so, you know, I, I think for Maxi, him going to Saudi, I think is going to be a great thing. He's got a really um, good front three that he's going to play with. Um, he'll have the opportunity to score a bunch of goals. Um, he'll be able to really finish and kind of get better at his finishing and assists. Um, and he also will, the, the crowds there are going to love him for the flash alone. And the defense is not as good in Saudi either. So he's going to, he's going to eat. He's going to have a really good time there. And then ultimately, yeah. you know, he's going to take care of his family and then I think he'll get an opportunity to come back either back in the Premier League or, um, you know, maybe in, the, in in France. But he's going to eat. He's going to do really well. I wish him all the best in the world at Saudi. And I want him to do well. I think he's going to have a field day because I tell you what, he is going to rip up that league, I'm telling you. And I think we sold him too cheap. That's another thing as well. But his injury record is not the best. And we will be checking out if he's really injured over the Saudi. We're going to check as well how many games he's been playing as well. And also, we're going to see if he goes back to France in the winter time. And then if he doesn't, then we'll know why. Because that's what he's been doing at Newcastle United. But we'll see what happens on that one when it comes. But look at the back four Newcastle, right? I mean, you haven't got the, the quickest of defence. We do defend well. We've got the best defensive record in the league. Do we need a pacey centre-back? Yes. <laughs> it's the only part of the team right now that concerns me. Um, we need another centre-back. We need a centre-back. Um, we need one just for depth um, because right now with the four that we have, um, they play a lot of minutes. They take on a lot of damage. Fabian Cher is like the Terminator, but he's forever, you know, getting caught up in stuff. And so having a backup to him is incredibly important. Um, I'm also not thrilled with the Dan Byrne as left back. Um, I think there's benefits to it, but there also are some challenges. Um, so we've been, you know, Target is back. And so we're trying mm -hmm. to plug Target back in. But I think just for depth purposes alone, 
Um, we need another um, center back. And then if we have somebody who's pacey that can keep up um, and then also push because we have this tremendous midfield now, um, the last thing you want to do is have, you know, have it slow down in the beginning and then try to speed it back up. If they can work hand in hand, um, I think it'll be great. Um, FFP, I think, is going to be the issue there because it's really about how much we can afford to spend. Mm -hmm. um, I figure we're going to probably get some loans on the, at like the last minute, right at the end of the transfer deadline. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if we had funds to be able to really throw money, I think that was, would be the two places that we would definitely get some quality players yeah. in for. Yeah, I think to do that, we're going to have to be in the Champions League for the next five, six seasons. I was speaking to someone earlier on, we need to be in the Champions League five, six seasons to make sure we can push on. The thing is, though, we can only spend what we've got. If you check out um, Lee Lawyer's um, Newcastle Fans TV, he had someone on today talking about the FSR, the FFP, what you could spend and how to go about it, yeah? We can't chuck money out and fear because of FFP. Look at Everton. Look how much they spent. Well over oh. Yeah. Half a billion and that, and they were in massive trouble for that. And I'm amazed why they haven't um took them to court right now. Do you know what I mean? They've been charged, but I don't know what's going to happen to that. But we are not going to spend, we're not going to get fleeced, we are not going to get ripped off by other clubs as well. You mentioned earlier the Newcastle tax as well. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. We're not going to pay for it, it's as simple as that. But the bottom line is, we just got to be smart in the transfer business in the transfer market and just. Like the Isaks, the Tanali, the Barnes. We will spend, but we have to spend money, which is coming in, I'm afraid. Yeah. This is my favorite part right now because there's almost no rumors and it's really quiet. And that means that the front office is working. <laughs> so yeah. they're going to randomly, a name will randomly come out that we have no clue about and it'll be great. Yeah. And so it's part of it for us is we just have to be patient um, and let them do what they do. But yeah, I, I think they're not willing to overspend. And if they are, they're going to overspend on something and a, a little bit, but it's going to be for the quality player, like, you know, Isaac kind of level player. They may overspend a little bit because the player is worth that overspend, but they're not going to, you know, just overspend in general. Um, and I think they're also looking at people that we have no clue they're looking at. Um, and so I, I think that makes being a fan of this team fun because you don't know how like i think we have a good idea of where they're going to line up um for aston villa but i wouldn't be surprised if there's an additional player or two that we weren't expecting that will be part of the team by then exactly exactly and on with your anticipation as well i mean you look at the players we link with musa diaby lucas rakata right we linked to one or two others as well. Everyone's like, get him in, get him in. Yeah, it might be the fan's choice, but it's not the owner's choice. They're inquiring yeah. about a player, but we never put an offer for them. That is the thing. And I think our fan base needs to realise that. Do you know what I mean? We need to just chill out, take a step back, let Dan and Eddie do their bits. I've always said that. Yeah, but I mean, part of it is we waited so long to be able to even be, you know, I remember when transfer windows, where I wouldn't even bother paying attention because I knew we weren't going to buy anybody. Or if we had anybody that was decent, we were going to sell them off. So, you know, there was no excitement or no jo any joy for transfer for the transfer windows. But now that there is, you know, we're just so excited. It's like we have to temper some of our excitement and let them do their jobs. I agree. But, it, but I understand why people are the way they are and why they're losing their minds if we don't get somebody or yeah. they're assuming that the rumors are true. I get it. But yeah, patience. It's virtue. Patience is the key. So mm -hmm. we'll wait and see on that one. We're just going to enjoy the season and go from there. I want to quickly talk about the memberships as well. I know we've got a wrap up, but um, the membership as well. Yesterday on social media, I don't know if you've seen it on the Newcastle webpage, on the Twitter handler, saying that fans kicked off that the tickets of £75 UK English money. That's about close to 100 quid, $100, something like that. Mm -hmm. And they kicked off because over 100,000 people sign for a membership, right? And basically, right, you, there's going to be very little ticks to be given away. Well, not given away, to be passed on. But £44, 74 quid is a lot of money, right? And you don't get a choice where you sit. Now, today, the club's come out and listened to the fans and said, we made a mistake, we put our hands up, 
and we're going to rectify. We're going to, we're going to like rethink it, and he did rethink it. And now, the money hasn't changed, but basically, you just have a choice of seats. Do you think, in your opinion, seventy-four pound is a lot of money for a Premier League game so, for Newcastle United? It definitely is a lot of money, um, especially with a fan base that's not used to spending that amount. Um, but unfortunately, it's where we're at. If we want to talk about players who want to come in, we want to talk about how do we get through FFP, we are not making enough money in our in our game receipts and what we make from our tickets, season tickets, and single tickets um, to be able to stay with the folks in the top four, top six mm. of the Premier League. And so we have to spend, as fans, we're going to have to spend more to help the team bring the players in we want them to bring in. Um, I had a chance to talk to Darren Eels in Philly, and he spent a lot of time talking about um, how he was really going to listen to fans. And mm -hmm. so I wasn't totally surprised at the, what they did today as far as um, backtracking on the fact that you couldn't pick which um, tier you wanted to, um, the 44 or the 70 um, amount. That I, I realized that they were going to go back on that. I'm happy they did. Um, but I, I think part of it is it's expensive, but it's kind of the, the nature of where we are. But then I also think that based on what I know about St. James Park, most of the tickets are probably going to be around the 44 level. Um, the 70 something dollar level is going to be in certain sections where they've always been more expensive. They're just a little more expensive than they used to be. Um, so I, I think ultimately people will be able to go to matches. I think it's not going to be the same way you went to every match. If you didn't have a season ticket, you can just buy yeah. a single ticket and go to the entire season. That's probably not going to happen anymore. But part of us growing and part of the team getting where it needs to go is that you have to have revenue and you have to expand the fan base. Um, yeah. So from an, from an international perspective, you know, how we do ticketing here is very different. Um, it was the one thing that was consistent when I talked to Jordy's that came over um, about how much the tickets cost for the summer series. They were like, this is insane. <laughs> but that's our normal. Yeah. I don't want that to be the normal there. But I think that, you know, part of it is um, selling the memberships, making them unlimited, I think is great. For people like me, like I've bought memberships for at least three, somewhere like three years, five years, I've bought memberships to the team. Um, I get my little bag and card, but I know I'm never going to be able to make a match. But I have the membership because I want to support the team. Um, I think allowing the unlimited memberships allows people to do that. Um, but I also think that the way they're structuring the tickets is ultimately it's going to be hard in the beginning. But I think as they learn from how the ticket sales go and who what the crowd looks like, they'll ultimately um, come up with something that will benefit the fans, that yeah. will make sure that the experience um, in the stadium is good. Because um, I think a big part of it is if, the, for instance, they allow uh, lots of other people who have never gone to matches to go, and all of a sudden St. James Park isn't loud, the people aren't standing up and screaming, they're not waving flags, they will go back to what they used to do in order to make sure that atmosphere stays the same because it's important for the team and how the players play. But I honestly think they're going to be pleasantly surprised that there's all these people who have never been able to match that are just as die hard as some of the folks who have been going for years and years. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know what it is, so it's going to be so difficult to get tickets at St. James's Park. There's going to be a massive waiting list. And for me, I think it's going to have to be a new stadium or you're going to have to extend the stadium. That is the thing. And I think you're going to have a new stadium. You have to shift it not far away to Nisus Park and do it from there. And that's St. James's Park as a fan camp. The fan zone's on the fan zone. So, yes, I think we need to be done because 52,000 ain't enough. Not no, enough. It's, it's not. I mean, just off the fan base in Newcastle alone, not even talking about people that travel, you know, within the UK, that's not enough. And if they, Never. you know, and if we go where the team, I believe the team is going, where they start winning cups, they're regular in Champions League, 
there battling for um, Premier League titles, that's not going to cut it. <laughs> so <laughs> they're, nah, they're going to have to expand. Not. They're going to have to expand. So I'm hoping they can keep St. James's Park by some miracle, but you're probably right. Yeah. Otherwise, it'd be no good. It'd be no good. But we'll see what happens on that as well. And um, one last question before we wrap up the show. Where do you think Newcastle United is going to be finishing this season? And who's going to be the key player as well? Oof. So in my wildest dreams, we make top four again. <laughs> but I also know how difficult that's going to be because all the other teams that were really bad last year have gotten a lot better. Um, if we can stay within the top eight, um, preferably top six, I think we'll be in good shape. Um, who our star is going to be this year? Um, Isaac is going to go nuts because now he has um, a system and he's more comfortable in it. And I think he'll play less on the wing. Um, I think that he's going to have a, a very large season, a very big season. And I think we're also going to see a lot of great stuff from Bruno because Tenali being there is going to allow him to be more creative. Um, so, yeah, it's it's going to be fun. Yeah. Let's hope it's the kiss and let's hope we get um, better than fourth next season. Hope we go for third next season. So, yeah, yeah. we'll see what happens on that one there. So, listen, James, thank you so much for coming on. And um, and it's been your first time making you come back again. Before you do... Can you just tell the viewers where you can find you on your socials, please? So you can find me um, at James 3.0 on Twitter or um, Tune Army GR, Tune Army Grand Rapids. Fantastic. Fantastic. Are, are you going to watch the seller on Saturday and Sunday? Oh, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> you got it. You got it. And I'll tell you what, I'll be off for two days and I'll be doing a fan cam as well. Um, probably um, in throughout the week as well, because I'll be back home on Sunday. So I'll probably do it on Monday. I'll do the live, sure. But I may try and get you back home Monday if you're free. If not, then we can just have a 10 minute, we can have a 10 minute fan cam to have your opinions on the game. And I think it's going to be a cracking show. So um, listen, I've already been backstage, right? So guys, if you like the video, like what we watch, and make sure you like and subscribe. Leave a comment section down below and tell what you think of James. I think James is fantastic. And until